In this video, we're going to learn how to instrument a Rust-based web application with Prometheus. I'm going to show you the Nickel framework and the Prometheus client for Rust, and you'll be able to instrument your own applications by the end of this video. Enjoy. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, you can see that I've got Nickel.rs, which is a web application framework for Rust. It's very similar to Express, if you've used that for Node.js. Uh, I like it because we can keep everything inside the same scope, which is good for the simplicity of this demo. Also then I have on the other tab, the Rust client. So this is for Prometheus, and this allows you to do all the things you could do with something like the Golang client or the Java client, but in Rust. And it has its own idiosyncrasies with that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine both of these examples together to give us something functional that will help us understand how to implement this client in Rust. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take some of this with some of that to produce something useful that we can start to get our hands around how it all works. Firstly, what you need to do is go into the cargo toml and we import our nickel and our Prometheus client. And then we go into our main dot rust. Also important to set up your dot VS code so that you can enable debugging. Um, there are a couple of different packages that can do this. So the rust uh, extension pack with rust can enable that. And so when you click start debugging, it will generate a template for you. If you don't have that enabled, then you're going to have to do it through the command line, which can be a little bit alien and a bit clunky if you're not used to working uh, with cargo. So first and foremost, I'm going to go and grab um, all of the imports and talk you through them. The first import here is to enable the usage of macros that come from nickel. Um, there are also some macros inside of the Prometheus client as well. And these are useful as ways to decorate the structures that we're going to need that need to be transcoded, um, especially when we are using the registry and we want to dump that out as an HP response. After we've done this, we're going to go ahead and build a really basic web server, right? So we're going to go function main, and then we need to define the web server. Uh, let server equals nickel.new, and then we're going to write a really simple handler. So get uh, forward slash, we can use middleware, and we'll put like a hello world, and then we're going to go server.listen out on AD80. And what I'll do is just check it works down here. You can see we got a couple of little errors, um, and that's because I need to unwrap the server. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so our server's running. Let's just double check that. So in a second terminal, uh, we'll just curl localhost. Let's have a quick check. You can see we have hello world. So we know this works. Let's just shut that down. What we need to do now is think about how we're going to implement Prometheus. So the first thing that you'll probably be familiar with is we're going to put a new registry in. Um, we want to set that to registry default. And then we want to have a way of incrementing on HTTP requests. So a counter is a good way of doing that. One of the interesting idiosyncrasies about the Rust implementation of the Prometheus client is that you're able to combine data types to annotate your labels. And what do I mean by that? Well, if I say let HTTP requests equal family, what this now gives me the ability to do is two things. I can define firstly a label type, which can be a structure which has fields inside of it. I can then use at the time of creating the increment, and then I can define uh, the type of instrument. So that probably sounds pretty complex. So let's go through this in a slightly simpler fashion. And this stuff is documented as well. So Starting from the top, well, what do labels actually mean for me, right? Labels are ways that we can start to um, search through the data in Prometheus and to use PromQL to pull out useful information. So the sort of labels I probably need in this kind of application are going to be things around the method um, and also, you know, the path, right, to see what path something was on. However, method as a string isn't particularly useful because I have to then go through and match that string uh, later on where I could just use an enum, which would be pretty straightforward. So let's create an enum method. This is, again is also uh, in the documentation as the preferred way of doing things. And what I'll also do is then add the uh, various derived macros on top. 
These, as I mentioned earlier on, are important for enabling the ability of um, being able to effectively encode these values from struts into string data when they go back out of the response. You'll see there's a slight difference there between the two because one is a label value method and one is the entire label set. And that comes from the Prometheus client uh, as part of the encoding uh, module. So that looks pretty good in terms of information. This is the kind of stuff that I care about. And I can decorate my application throughout describing uh, you know, what these things are and where, they, where they're occurring, right? So which paths are being hit. But let's actually go through and look at how would that work. So let's go down back to our HP requests that we were thinking of building a minute ago. Now let's set the family. And that family is going to be made up of labels with a counter. And then we were going to set a new default on that. And that's the default initialization. The next thing we need to do is if you just start incrementing that, nothing's going to happen because that isn't hooked up to the registry. So we're going to go registry dot register. And inside of here, we're going to fill out all the information uh, that helps us give a description to what uh, this metric is. So HP request total, number of requests made, and then we're linking in um, the HP requests. Now, this is important to understand ownership in Rust, and I'm not going to go through Rust as a language, but we would actually have to clone this because uh, it doesn't own this. So we're going to clone that there. And that means we can now use the HP requests when we're forming the registry value um, that goes out again at the end. Now, the registry value that goes out again, let's think about that. Well, we do need to have a metrics port or a rather a metrics path, right? So let's set up metrics and we'll put our middleware in. What do we need to put inside of it? Well, it's actually quite straightforward. What you need to do is to create a string and you need to encode it into that string. So let's say let me put buffer equals we're going to go string new. And then we're going to use a built in function called encode, which comes from the library. And we are going to take the buffer and we're going to encode the registry uh, into that string. But of course, at the end, we then need to return that. So we're just going to return buffer. So on metrics now, we're now returning buffer. However, because we've not yet actually started creating metrics, nothing's going to happen. So the last piece of this puzzle is that we need to increment the counter anytime somebody hits our hello world. So that's quite straightforward. So we're going to do HTTP requests, which is the piece we set up earlier on here. And we're going to say uh, get or create. And then what we're going to go and do is we're going to create a new labels structure inside of there. And this is the custom structure that we've set up. Uh, and then we're going to add a dot increment on the end. So this is really useful because we can actually create structs with more complex fields and map those into Prometheus labels. Uh, but in this particular case, you can see that I've taken something quite straightforward. So let's go ahead and just make sure that this is all working. We can do a, a cargo run just to see if we got anything wrong. Um, if I skip up here, ah, well, the last thing I forgot to do was I forgot to update the methods type uh, to be this enum, which has correctly given me that error. There we go. So now the server's running. Let's try it in the other tab. So we can see hello world, but the idea is that we can also get metrics. So let's try then metrics. You know what you can see now is that we can see our metric has been updated and we've had three requests made on that path. I hope you found this useful as a very quick guide on how to get started with the Prometheus client and Rust. You can see that uh, there is some idiosyncratic knowledge and some idiomatic knowledge around the way that Rust works. I think that once you look at something like uh, Nickel as a simple way to get started with a web server, you can figure out how to put things like gauges and histograms in and take the part of learning the web framework away and just focus on getting the Prometheus implementation in. Please do like and subscribe, leave me any comments, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.